Good afternoon, everybody. So I'm gonna just set this up. Okay. So, one of the jobs that we're working on uh, tomorrow morning involves the paint sprayer. So, I know that this is something that maybe some of you have, have used, so if you haven't, um, we don't do a whole lot of spraying here at Titan Tiny Homes, so one of the things that I wanted to do was kind of go through what it's like to rent one of these machines. So, bear with me one second, I'm gonna flip the camera around so I can see kind of what's going on on the screen. Hold on one second here. Let's see what that does. Hold on one second. Flip this around. Um, here we go. Oh, come on back. I got this gimbal now, so hopefully it stays nice and well. There you go. Just flipped around to me. All right, so. All right. Well, I don't want to do that. Shoot. Okay. All right. Hopefully. Okay. Now it's now it's back to where it was. Okay. So. All right. Okay. Why won't you work? Okay. There we go. All right. So. So I have here is a, a Graco sprayer. Now we don't use this sprayer a lot, so and I'm sure you guys wouldn't want to go out and buy one of these, um, you know, professional sprayers necessarily, and neither do we. We don't use it enough, so we feel renting it just is just as good. But there's a couple of things about these that I feel is important, which is kind of why I'm starting the live video off today this way is the nozzles, the tips. So what we typically do, and Home Depot will work this out with you. So I was just at Home Depot, that's where we rented this machine from. Pretty standard place, you can find Home Depot pretty much anywhere. So I'm gonna get up close on the camera now. These tips get the crap beat out of them, both in the nozzle and everything like that. And then here's the other part that really sucks when it comes to renting one of these machines. This strainer right here. I don't know if you can, I'm gonna try to fan this over. So this strainer gets, I mean, it's just nasty. So what we work out with the Home Depot is, they say go over to the shelf, grab what you need to make the gun work, which is these three parts right here. This is the sprayer tip. This is the guard that houses the sprayer tip. And this is the strainer. So today we're gonna change these out. So, all right, so the gun works pretty simple like this. So this got to be undone, which this unscrews like this. And then there's a, there's a couple of pieces in here that you got to pay attention for. So the first step is pull this nozzle out. See, and they're so seized up in here there, that one came out. All right, so then you take this guy right here, this pointy end, stick it in there. That's gonna pop this guy out right here. So this, these two pieces come together in the new set. Now I explain that because there's no other real parts to this besides those. So when it comes to building the new one, it's really simple. So what we're gonna do, move that away a little bit, pan up. All right, open this up. We open up the new sprayer nozzle. Tip. Which comes with a new one of these. Now this has got rubber on the end. So if you've ever rented one of these sprayers before 
and it starts leaking like crazy, it's because this piece is worn out, which is very typical because a lot of people rent these machines and they'll spray textured paint or things they're not supposed to through them. And it causes all these parts to wear out. And this is what causes the frustration during the day. When you're shooting the gun, which I don't know if it's got any pressure, but no, it's pretty frozen. <laughs> it's really cold out today, so there's water in here. We've got to thaw out. But when you're spraying this gun and you notice like paint leaking all over your hands and stuff like that, it's probably caused because this piece right here wore out. So to replace all these pieces, there's a trick to this. See this little bump on the end right here? You take this right here and you set it on there. And then you take it and you put it up inside here and then it sets the piece. Now when you're setting this, you gotta make sure, and that's why this is kinda angled, so that you can turn this piece inside there. And what you wanna do, it's kinda tricky, but I'm telling you, this is, the, this is the secret to making a rental spray gun actually worthwhile. So then you got this right here, this cylinder. See how that's kinda curved right there? You wanna line those up. So when you're placing this in here, You just line that up like that, and then, kind of, and then that's it. And then this piece right here then slides in really nice and easy. And it's smooth, and it, and it does what it's supposed to do, and it just sets up really nice. And then you take this piece right here, and you screw it on the gun. So what's gonna happen is, see the, the tip fell out because it's so nice and new, but you set that in there, and then what you'll do is you'll set this collar right here. Put that in there. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna force pressure up on that, on that piece. And then it holds everything in there really nice and snug. And now, that's the first step and making this look like this as opposed to all this junk that they give you. This, nice and new, ready to go. It's never had textured paint sprayed through it. It's gonna spray nice, gets rid of all this crap. So, and then what you'll do is you'll either hand this back to Home Depot and say thank you for giving me a credit for the nice new pieces, or you'll put these back in you put that in your toolbox. And then the next time you rent one of these guns, you put your fittings on there, and then you know you got something that's gonna work really nice. Now this, this is only the first part. So let's, I'm gonna pan this down, and we're gonna take a look at what, what's the second piece of information. So I'm gonna sit in the install here. And we're gonna... Okay, here's the second piece. The strainer, see? how you can see me through the lens, that's what it's supposed to look like. Nice and shiny and, and clear. Like, I put this up against the lens and you can still see me. Now, I take off this old crappy one. I'll show you what that looks like. Uh-oh. A little frozen. We'll get pliers really quick. So it's frozen on there pretty good, but I got a plier, so we'll get it off. See, we te you also, one of the other things you want to do is when you're at the Home Depot, you want to have them fill up a bucket of water and spray the gun. Make sure it actually pumps something before you get it all the way back home. That's the second trick. So it's negative like two degrees outside, so this thing froze within like 15 minutes. So 
that's why it was pretty tough to get off. So now, let me show you what this thing looks like. I'm gonna do the same thing now. See all that crap in there? That's gonna cause the pump to have to work harder and not gonna be as reliable. So, and we change out our strainer. Now we got a nice new strainer. On the front here, you'll wonder what this bucket is for. It's not for your coffee. It's for this thing to sit in. So I don't know if you can see that, but. So that's for that to sit in. So that way, um, you know, you don't end up with uh, paint everywhere. All right, so that's it. Now we gotta let this thing thaw out, and then tomorrow's video will show you how we spray, so. Oh, it's warming up. See, a little mist. So that's it. So you change this out and either save this or if you come across a Home Depot that's as nice as the one by our house or by our shop, they will uh, they'll give you the credit for what the, these three parts cost off the rental and then, and then you have brand new parts. Don't be afraid to ask. The stuff that they'll give you looks like all this cruddy nonsense which will only cause you frustration. And the, and the really frustrating thing is, is if you've never rented one of these things before, and then you go and work, try to work with all of this nonsense instead of stuff that's like nice and clean and not worn out. So it'll cause you so much frustration and you'll think that like you're no good at it or that you don't know what you're doing. And it's quite the opposite. It really comes down to these like three parts really make or break this whole this whole uh, experience right here because what happens is a lot of people put textured paint or they'll do like something spray something through it or not and what it does is it wears this guy out this tip so I don't know if you can see that but like I'll try to angle this upright so like you could barely see a little air through there so that's where the paint comes through it causes a little fin I don't know if you can see that but that's where the paint comes through and the other part, like I explained earlier, is this piece right here. So this guy right here, okay, this sits on here, right? That causes the seal. So on the back here, there's a little rubber thing. Well, it's all hard and worn out, and what ends up happening is, is you go to spray, and the, and the paint starts leaking down the trigger, It'll just cause you to get really pissed. So what we always do is we just change this stuff out and then we'll save it. Or we'll give it back to Home Depot or whatever. But the point is, is to change those par parts out. Most of the time Home Depot will give you a credit for those parts. If they don't give you a credit, just buy them anyways. It's like an extra $40, but I guarantee you it'll save you so much headache because you won't have like drips all over your hands and you won't have crap everywhere. The mist, the spraying of the paint is frustrating enough sometimes. The last thing you need to do is work with leaky and crappy components when you don't do this stuff every day. So I, and we do work with this on a, on a decent amount of basis. So changing this stuff out makes a huge difference for us as well. All right, you guys ready to go look at some stuff? Let's go look at some units. All right, we're gonna use this tomorrow, so I wanted to make sure that we got it all squared away. All right, let's, uh, well, my camera, my gimbal's got a mind of its own today. All right, let me just go, let me go set these off right here. All right, let's go see what kind of fancy dancy progress we got going on here. All right, so. <clears throat> So this is the unit that we're getting ready to paint with the sprayer. So you can see we got all the we got all the windows taped off and everything like that. But here's something that's a little fancy and that you might want to take note on. So if you put these little lights in your house, a quick trick is see this cardboard right here? So the same hole saw that we used to drill out these holes, we then took a piece of cardboard and we drilled a bunch of holes in it. 
And the same slugs that fall out when you cut this with a hole saw, these fall out. So then we pop, and the hole is already in the middle because of the pilot hole of the hole saw. And then we just put the wires through there and kind of hold them up like that so that when we're spraying, we don't get, a, stuff doesn't start falling down and we don't spray up in the areas that we're not supposed to spray up into. And for those of you, because I know some of you are like, well, that's great. Um, too bad I don't know what a hole saw is. So I'll show you what that looks like really quick. So, but before we do that, just a quick pan. This thing's coming along really nice. And one of the cool things about this unit is gonna be the stained trim. So all this trim over here is what the trim is gonna be. It's gonna be offset by white. So it's gonna be pretty fancy. So that's really it. Can you explain? We have a question. Can, we, can you explain the advantages and features of your trailers? Uh, they roll down the road. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, let's, before I answer that, I'm gonna, I know some of you are probably wondering what a hole saw is. So I wanna show you what that is. I just have to find one. So I'm going a little bit of, you know who's got them is Josh. Josh has them in his toolbox. He's got hole saws. Now we just have to find Josh's toolbox. It's kind of an Easter egg hunt around here. <clears throat> we use a uh, we use a rather vocal communication system around here during the day when looking for tools. They usually yell out what we're looking for, and then somebody will say, "It's over there," or "It's over here." Ah, found one. Joe had one in his car. All right, this is a hole saw. So a pilot bit goes through the middle here. And then it's a saw, but it cuts a hole. So that's what a hole saw is, in case anybody was wondering what a hole saw is. Now, the advantages of our trailers would be easiest to just go by a trailer and show you. So that's what we're going to do. All right. I'm going to set this tripod up because I'm the only one here right now. Makes things easy. Okay. So. Can you down a little bit? All right, so there's a couple of key things and I'll try to get them both, there we go, perfect. Both of them in the same, same shot. Okay, so first of all, there's a lot of dust on here. Okay. We install what we call an adjustable hitch on all of our trailers. This hitch has the ability to sit all the way down here or all the way up here. This is gonna ensure that your tiny house stays level while in transit. So no matter the height of your truck, we can, with this hitch, dial in that the house always stays level when it cruises down the road. Unless you're going up like some crazy hill or something. But level in relation to the road. Okay, this is the second thing. Is these pipe mount jacks. The house is jacked up right now, but we'll just undo one for a minute. Okay. See that? So our jacks come off the come off their mount. Like so. And I like this because you have full circumference of support. I'll show you a different trailer that we have in our shop of a jack that I'm not a real fit I'm not a real fan of. So but this one I like a lot. This is a 5,000 pound capacity jack. And like I said, it sits on this pipe mount support. So when you're in transit, it sits like this. We're gonna set the house, you set it down like that. You take this pin and it goes through the hole right there. Gonna lock your jack in place and then a little spin and you're locked up again so those are two advantages I like right away for the next ones I'm gonna have to pop the camera off and we're gonna go down below 
So, down here, there's a couple of things that I like. Okay, one, first of all, this is my design of a trailer. So this is how I like, I worked with the trailer company to design these. So we put these outrigger gussets in here. And th these are, if you look behind me, you can see that they're every so many feet. They're about two feet apart. That's another thing that is pretty unique to our trailer. So then here's another thing. We always put hurricane tie down straps on our trailers. That way they're allowed in most places like Florida and so forth. And then you can turn buckle these and support them down uh, to the ground. So that's, that's one, two, four, four things. All right, now the next thing. We happen to have a wheel off on here, so this is kind of cool. Okay, so all four. This is a seven. This is a seven K eight axle hub. Now, the cool thing about our trailers is, is every axle has a brake, so all three axles have electronic brakes, and they're eight lug, seven pound axle, seven thousand pound axles really tough stuff so that's another thing that I like now since we're down here I'm gonna pan up a little bit this is a perfect shot you can see this all right this is the fender on another trailer that I'm gonna show you in a minute you'll see no structural supports underneath the fender why is that important well it's important for a couple of different reasons one of the reasons it's important is this now becomes structural. It's, all, it's just as structural as the rest of the trailer. I'll show you another trailer in a second and show you the contrast of these kind of things that frustrated us early on in, in, our, in our endeavors. We started to grow as a company. The other fenders tend to sag. Um, they're not structural. You have to over-engineer the wall structure to kind of cantilever over something that should just be as solid as the rest of the trailer. So when we were working with our trailer manufacturer to develop the trailers that we wanted to bring uh, to the tiny house industry and use it, you know, on our main line of tiny houses, this was something that was very important to me, was to make sure that this was in integrity, or had integrity, I should say. So between the uh, brakes on all three axles and these structural fenders, that brings us to how many things, people, I think? six right okay yep yeah, six then from there um, there's small little differences uh, like for example on the tongue of the trailer we draw the tongue support all the way back to the to the first coupler and that ensures that here I'll show you what that looks like so what I'm talking about is See how there's two pieces of metal? See how the, the bottom one goes all the way to the hitch? And then that one on the bottom goes all the way to the first coupler. That, that allows so that nothing breaks loose. So it's all nice and, and, and solid like that. Um, some would say it's unnecessary, but it's not that much extra material and it usually ends up being cut off anyway. So when working with the trailer manufacturer, they said that, well, that makes a lot of sense. Let's do that. So that's what we did. Uh, so that's that's three things, or times three, three times three, nine things, or whatever that. How many we got? Adjustable hitch. Then we've got. Oh, I know what the what I'm missing. It was right in the front. It was staring me in the face. This little. This, I'm gonna set this down for a second. Okay, so. This this hand crank. We put it in the front. We don't like it when it comes on the top because we can't build anything out this way because you smack your hand into it. So it was important that we put something that came out the front. Pretty much everything else is pretty much standard, but those are the big differentiators between a Titan Tiny Home uh, trailer chassis and say somebody else's. Now let's go look at somebody else's. This is somebody else's, uh, this is another manufacturer of trailers in the industry. And you'll see pretty much all the frustrators <laughs> that were 
not on that trailer are on this trailer. So you'll be able to see the difference. So this is an older unit. We actually store this unit for our uh, customer. But you'll see right off the bat, right here. See? I can't build anything this way. So we had to limit the, the size of this storage box. Even though it fits the profile of the tongue, we couldn't build another two foot, foot and a half back because we're afraid we're gonna smash our hand on here. So with our other new trailers, we can come all the way up to here and fill all this space. I don't know if you can really get the perspective of that without really looking this way. So because of this, we can't build here. So on our trailers, we put the hand crank out the front like you just saw. All right, right off the bat, another thing right here. Okay, I don't know if I'm gonna be, okay. Let's do this like that. Okay, so right here, non-adjustable. And this company still makes these trailers this way to this day, and I don't know why, but they don't make an adjustable hitch. So this trailer always sits jacked up in the air a little bit when going down the road. So those are some really obvious things that we, we decided that were no good. Here's another thing. I don't like this either. So, on this trailer, this is not removable. It's also a pain in the ass to work. So this has a C-clip behind here, and this lever right here that you have to pull and then spin this thing. A couple things happen. This collar gets rusty, and it starts not to move as well anymore. No matter how hard you try to maintenance it and stuff like that, it always becomes a little bit of a pain. Also, I don't like that these are not removable. One of the benefits to the, to the pipe mount is you can pop the pin and you can use this part of the, as a shovel if you need to dig out to, make, to get this thing to spin and sit upright. Because once you're all the way buried in here, you're kind of in a tough position. So I like the other one because on the fly, when we're somewhere, we're setting up a unit, you can pop this off, use it as a shovel, get the ground clearing out of the way, put it into position, and level the trailer. Also, and this is gonna to be tough, I'm gonna to pop this off the tripod for a second and show you this. So, I don't know if you can see this. No, yeah, you can. See this? We have put, they have to put this extra piece of material, which they don't paint very well, and it kind of gets rusty and things like that. And so the, the point of this is because the siding comes in right here. So in order for this to work and clear the siding, they have to put this extra piece of material and it's just more pieces to just work with. So the pipe mount comes out and then automatically clears the siding. So I really like that part of it. Now, the thing that I don't like the most, here it comes. And I'll do it this way and I'll try not to get the logo of the company in there because I don't want to talk bad directly. So anyway, all right, see this? It's a piece of structural steel. There's nothing wrong with this. What's wrong with it is the fact that there's no, there's no supports here. So if this seam or this fold, or, you know, this webbing right here, if this cracks, your whole wall, I mean, this thing is like six inches wide. Your wall is only as wide as my hand. So your whole wall is gonna come, come off of here, which is no bueno. So um, that's one thing. And then the final beef, of what we were talking about is the fenders and some other things that I'll show you right now. So this right here, and I'm gonna turn the camera around for this. All right, see that gap? You didn't see that gap on our trailer. That's the top, oop, sorry for all those who caught it, apologize. So, oh, there I go again. So anyways, this is the tongue support. And like, unlike our trailers, it doesn't go all the way back to the coupler. That bothers me for a couple of reasons because it leaves an opening for problems. And finally, my biggest thing that frustrates me is this, is this flimsy fender. So from a side perspective, you can see, see that sag? Every single trailer has that goofy sag in there. They're all smiling at you. So I'll just, you see it? every single one and this is there's no structural support here so you to build this wall you have to build up you have to build a big header 
and then you have to come down. You can't put any weight on here because it's already, it can't even hold up its own weight. So that's the other thing. Everything else is pretty much relatively the same. But that's my trailer rant for the day. So apologize for any questions that I missed. Okay, I missed a lot of them. All right, so we answered the features of the trailer. Are there any security features <coughs> to keep your trailer from stalling? Yeah, there is. There's a big difference and it goes right back to the, the foundation rant. And I'll show you right now. All right. See that? I can't take that hitch off. Now, they make all sorts of kind of, you know, things for the tires, things for the hitch. Any, they make a lot of things that could be cut with a saw, okay? But let me show you something that you can't cut it because it isn't even there. I'll show you what I mean. All right. So I'm going to pan this down a little bit. Okay. So like I said, they make trailer uh, locks and stuff to prevent your stuff from being stolen. But what I tell people is if your unit's going to get parked and you're not moving it anytime soon, undo these four bolts and take this hitch with you. First of all, somebody come and plan in a hitch up your house they're probably planning to bring a saw a torch something to cut some sort of lock off of here and they're probably gonna bring a hitch for their truck but what they're not gonna bring is one of our special Dan Damco hitches take the four bolts off remove this and nobody can steal your house the only way they're gonna steal it is they're gonna have to wrap chains around it and try to jack it up and drag it out of there but they're certainly not going to get very far and I guarantee you they're not going to go that fast because without this, they can't connect it up to their car or their truck or their whatever. So that's like the, that's the best thing about this adjustable hitch is you can take these four bolts off. Nobody can take your house away from you. So that's that. All right. What other questions do we have for this evening? This is good. Sorry, my hand's in the way. I'm trying to get the questions. All right. So... How much weight can your trailers handle? 20, 24, 28. All right, this is a good question. So here's how this answers up. On our 20 foot trailers, we can install seven K axles. We typically do six K axles. Now six, time, six times two, you're gonna get 12,000 pounds of gross axle weight. If you do two seven K axles, then that trailer is capable of 14,000 pounds. Now on our 24 foot trailers, we put 7K axles regardless. So that's gonna give you 14,000 pounds worth of capacity. We can also upgrade that 24 to 8,000 pound axles, which would then obviously give you 16,000 pounds worth of capacity. On our 28s and 32s, we, we do 7K triple axle arrangement, which will give you 21,000 pounds of gross axle weight you could also upgrade those to 8Ks, which will then give you eight times three, which is gonna put you up at 24. So that's in a nutshell, our spectrum of uh, weight capacities when we're talking trailers. All right, sorry, I can, this is the only way I can scroll through this. Smart idea with the crank on that side like that. Thank you. Uh, you Thanks, I didn't really know anything about trailers, but I just learned a whole bunch of important details from you. Well, I appreciate that, Jules. What's the hitch called that's up higher? Uh, cantilever, oh, you mean like a gooseneck? The one that like comes up over the top? So that's either a fifth wheel or a gooseneck. What's the typical 28 foot home weigh in at? Uh, 28 foot home is gonna weigh anywhere from 12 and a half thousand pounds to about 15,000 but 15,000 is really heavy most of our houses don't weigh anywhere near that okay well as always I appreciate your questions comments and concerns I don't know why I always hold on one second here I should do this this way from now on okay 
What other questions do we have here? What are the advantages or disadvantages of using a gooseneck? What are the advantages? Okay, well, there's, there's several, but there's several things that unless you really need it, you really don't need it kind of thing. Um, one of those things is, uh, this is getting really frustrating. I need a camera guy like all day, every day, just walking around with me. This tripod's driving me crazy. Let me set this up so I can talk. All right, so. Let's get back to the questions. Let's see what we got here. Advantages of gooseneck. Okay, so some of the advantages of the gooseneck are gonna be, um, you can you can turn easier, so you can maneuver the trailer easier. Um, also, a lot of the weight is censored over uh, your rear axle of your vehicle, which is gonna cause the uh, trailer to track a lot better. Um, but we have sway bars and all sorts of stuff you can attach to a bumper pull and get the same thing. But it does centralize a lot of that heavy tongue weight right over the axle, which causes the truck not to squat as much. So that would be those big advantages right there. Um, how many goosenecks have you done? How much more do they cost? They really don't cost that much more. Uh, I think a lot of people charge more because they, they, in theory, you can charge more. They really don't cost that much more. We've done a few goosenecks. We have a gooseneck coming up in a couple of weeks. We're doing a shell kit. So part of the daily walkthrough will obviously be going through that trailer and showing you the, the benefits to that particular trailer in contrast to other trailers that are out there. Um, ours are kind of, we tend to overkill, but I'd rather have the trailer last forever than uh, only last until the warranty's up. Um, I recommend a gooseneck for somebody who's traveling, absolutely, but you also need the truck to pull it. And a lot of people t typically are gonna move these a couple of times. And so I don't see the point in recommending it. I don't recommend a gooseneck for somebody who's just gonna move it once and park it and be done. So that would be my uh, take on that. But anyways, it's getting late and uh, I gotta get rolling. So I appreciate you so much for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed the little sprayer demonstration. If you have any comments or extra questions, please leave them below. And we will be right back here tomorrow in the afternoon for our daily walkthrough. Thank you so much for your time.